More and more people are moving into homes and apartments like this, and the U.S. Census Bureau has the numbers to back it up. Foods like these spicy chips can cause heartburn or acid reflux, but for Megan, even water would upset her digestive system. If you haven't heard of Josh Hamilton's up and down roller coaster like story, you might get to in a theater near you. And if you're ever faced with a wrong way driver, what you should do is remain calm and remember those basic skills you learned in driver's ed. Last season, students who parked in the freshman lot would have to move their cars to the overflow lot. This season, it's going to be a little different. TCU librarians are ready to bring their knowledge straight to your cell phone. Students can now text a librarian a question and receive a fast reply for free, depending on your cell phone plan. The man who brought the newest line of communication made it more efficient by having one text sent to several librarians for the best response. It's relatively easy to use on the librarian end of things. The texts received go to a large group of librarians' computers during reference hours. They type back an answer and send it to the person's cell phone. I'm going to text them right now. It is 4.44 p.m. I'm going to ask, how late is Bistro Burnett open? It is 4.48 p.m. and they have texted me until 3 a.m. So that was really quick. I think any time that you can match the type of communication that the students are using in their daily life, I think that's always a good idea. While Hunter Sprague is appreciative of this new service, he knows that some questions require more than just 160 characters. I mean, I know that you can email a librarian, um, which I think makes more sense because if you have a research question, they can give a very, very long response. I feel like texting might not, it will limit the response. For more in-depth answers, the librarian suggests email, chat, phone, or in-person requests. I think you're going to have a lot of people coming in to get that one-on-one -on -one help that they don't feel like they could do with an instant message. The tech service has seen between 20 and 25 texts since its relaunch, and librarians await more questions from students. A lot of times we even get a little smiley face at the end, um, indicating that they were pleased. <laughs> Pleased with the library's help and with their new cell phone contact. Members of the TCU community met and marched in silence, not only in remembrance of Trayvon Martin, a Florida teen who was shot to death, but to bring awareness to a larger social problem. This march was more about the injustices that happen on a daily basis that are not recognized, the injustices that happen that no one speaks out on, um, the ones that happen in our community here on our campus, um, in our city, in our state. Participants were asked to march in silence and reflect on any injustices they have seen. Members of TCU NAACP, Black Student Association, and Phi Beta Sigma publicized and attended the event. Organizers said the march was also a reminder to participants that similar incidents happen every day. Um, mainly what I hope that they get out of it is a voice, you know, just to um, exercise and to use their voice uh, to speak out on any injustice that they may encounter, not to turn the other cheek, not to look the other way. Program coordinator Jason Wallace worked closely with TCU NAACP, and while he says the crowd wasn't as big as he'd hoped, it was still a good mix of people. It was good to see um, different representatives from different facets of the university as well as the community come together for such a noble cause. Three people spoke at Frog Fountain and asked the crowd to take action as they see injustices occur. Social movements and just movements in general should be made when, they're, um, when justice is seen. Um, when injustice is seen, not just when someone is killed or when there's a genocide and those kind of matters. Organizers hope participants left with a sense of awareness and recognition of situations like Martin's. You can hear the sounds of Latin music and students dancing in the rec every Friday night. After a rise in student interest last semester, the first Latin dance club at TCU is now official. Students need what they, whatever they want to just enjoy and have fun. Um, we are offering it because a lot of people ask for it and seem to enjoy it today. So. When students aren't leading the class, participants can pay money to learn more difficult dances from professionals. One student says she could feel the difference between the rigor of traditional dancing and the romance in salsa. I dance polo, which is a little bit different. So these dances are more living, more about moves, more about relationship, more about fun.
The student teachers make sure participants have fun and practice by switching up dance partners and keeping the class engaged. And you know, it's not that it's like a class, it's a fun social thing. And it's different from a club where you meet every week and have meetings. It's more, you're doing things and it's a good break from school. And the class gives students a chance to learn Latin dances, including salsa, bachata, samba, cha-cha, and merengue. Student teachers learned to love Latin dances from outside exposure and wanted to learn and teach the technique. Uh, a lot of my friends um, were doing it and, you know, we'd go out every once in a while and have parties and we'd be dancing and I just kind of fell in love with, love with it from there and just picked it up. And then I went back home to India, I took a few lessons also, so it's kind of a learning experience. Most students in the class say their favorite dance they've learned is bachata and are ready to teach you their moves.